in the matter in the matter of the encroachment permit application number L96. Yeah. Roy Um is the applicant in this before the State Board of Land Commissioners of the state of Idaho. And so my name is Lincoln Strawn. I am the hearing officer no. that is managing this hearing. Okay. I know we've got some chatter on the line. So, um, if everyone could hear the lines, there you go. Otherwise, you wouldn't could, be able to hear it. Okay, if everyone could mute their lines um, so that we don't have any more cross chatter uh, than necessary. And so, if, if people were just now joining or did not quite hear me at the very start here, I'll just announce again that this um, hearing is before the State Board of Land Commissioners of the State of Idaho in the matter of the encroachment permit application number L96. S2633 of Troy Crewman, Crewman and Maker. And I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the name right. I'll, I'll get it right when we, we get you on the line. Um, and this is case number PH2021, Hub 20002. And so, as mentioned, I'm the hearing officer, Lincoln Strawn. I'm a deputy attorney general uh, coming to you from Boise, Idaho, via this Zoom um, interface here and scheduled hearing is July, I'm sorry, June 10th, 2021 at six o'clock Pacific time. And just for your awareness, um, you know, you can see me on the Zoom camera. What I'm looking at are two computer terminals uh, that has the case documents in front of me. And that's again, regarding the permit application that, that we'll get into for a moment. So what we're gonna do first is I'm going to get a sense of, um, the applicable parties on the line, and that is the applicant. And if there's anyone from the Idaho Department of Lands on the line, as well as the, the two main objectors in this case. So um, first off, um, let me ask, is anyone on the line from the Idaho Department of Lands? Yes, Mr. Hearing Officer, my name is Mike Amer, and uh, with me I have Angela Kaufman. All right, thank you, Mr. Amer. And, and we do not have any public visitors here. We have the office open, available to people to show up. I just okay. walked, to the park, walked to the parking lot and didn't see anybody. Okay, gotcha. So uh, thank you for that, Mr. Amer, and, and hello, Ms. Kaufman. And so um, I'll note that for uh, the record that, that you guys are appearing and that you did not have any people from the public that came into your conference room. And so the next thing I wanna make sure, do we have uh, Mr. Uh, Crewman and Acre on the line. And if so, please um, correct my pronunciation of your name because I'm sure I'm getting it wrong. All right, so is Click the there. There you go. Yes, Troy Crewman Acre, I'm here. All right, thank you, sir. And please say your name one more time. I don't know why I'm having- Troy Crewman Acre. Crewman Acre. Romanecker. All right. Thank you. I don't know why I had such difficulty with it when I said it before. So I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Um, no problem. And do you have any anyone with you, uh, whether they be legal counsel or anyone else that's going to speak uh, uh, with you as part of this hearing today, or will you be speaking for yourself? Um, I'm here at Avista, which okay. I've been working with to get the power across. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm All working right. with him. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And will he be speaking on the hearing today or you don't know yet? Oh, yes, I think so. Okay, gotcha. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, Krumenacre. Am I getting that right? It's Yes, that'd be fine. It's Krumenacre. 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 All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate your patience. And please feel okay. free to correct me again if I get it wrong. All right. So and then let's um, go to the main objectors to make sure they are on the line, um, are Mr. and Mrs. Pound on the line. I got it. Yes, sir, we are. All right, thank you, Mr. Pound. I and, apologize for no camera for whatever oh, reason. Oh, that's okay. And you know, for anyone who um, is gonna speak on the hearing today, if you don't want the camera on, that is fine. Um, you're not required to, um, as long as on we can hear you. As long as we can hear your voice, that's that's what matters. And so um, thank you, Mr. Pound. And similar question for you. I, I know you and your wife filed the objection 
Uh, will you be speaking for yourselves during the hearing? Do you have legal counsel or anyone else that, that's going to join you um, to participate um, on your objection? No, you sir. I, we will be speaking for ourselves. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, all right. So, and then let's go to the other objector. Um, and that is, and again, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Hagadone. Uh, Mr. Hagadone, are you on the line? That's correct. Yes, I am. All right. Thank you. And same question as the others. Um, will you be speaking just um, for yourself today or will you have uh, legal counsel or anyone else speaking with you? Just myself. Just yourself. All right. That works. All right. Well, I, I, I know we have a lot of public, um, uh, a lot of members from the public on the line as well. And so uh, this is a public hearing and you know, your, your observation of this hearing is welcome and you're welcome to stay for the duration of the hearing. And once we hear from the main parties, then I'll open it up uh, for members of the public. If there's anyone that wants to make a comment, that's fine as well. Just recognize that we will be doing that at the end of the proceeding um, and not before. And I'm, I'm not sure how long this hearing will last. It may not last very long, but it, 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 uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, and so for the members of the public, you're free to you know, if you hang up, if you have to go do something, and if you want to check back in and see if the hearing is still going on, that's fine. Uh, and as mentioned, if you want to listen to the entire hearing, that's fine as well. And if you want to make publics at the end, public comments at the end, uh, I'll give you a chance to do that. So uh, there was a lot of preliminary items, and I just have a couple more to go through, and then we'll, we'll start hearing um, testimony regarding um, the issue at hand, and that is that permit application. And so in terms of exhibits, I received exhibits from pretty much all of the main parties that we've already spoken to, and I'm admitting those exhibits as part of the record here that either party, any party can refer to uh, during the hearing and that I can refer to when I'm writing the written decision on this matter. So my decision will not be made over the phone this evening. It will follow in writing. And, and by the rules, we have to get that to um, the commission and the commission will issue their final order um, within a, the applicable time period. And, and that is, I believe, 90 days from the application date um, and 30 days after the hearing. Um, yeah, so no more than 30 days after the conclusion of the hearing, the director of the Idaho Department of Lands will issue the final decision. And so what my order is, is a recommended order um, but it, it won't be final until the director of the Idaho Department of Lands issues that final order. So procedurally, that's the way it will work. And again, um, you know, if anyone submitted exhibits, I know some of the parties uh, took the time to label their exhibits, you know, one, two, three, four, and, and so forth. Others just submitted exhibits and, and, you know, they were in the form of attachments and letters. That's fine as well. Um, but if you submitted something, it is part of the record here um, that will be given consideration. And just to let all the parties know, I have reviewed all the written materials that were submitted. I reviewed the application and all the objections, as well as all the comments from the, the various agencies. Um, and that includes, let me just pull, and again, I'm, I'm looking at the documents um, behind the screen here, so I know you guys can't see them, but um, if you see me looking off in the distance, that's what I'm looking at is, is the different case documents. So that includes the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality and the Department of Lands and Transportation and a couple other agencies. And so I've reviewed all the written materials um, and, and I'll just kind of give a summary of my understanding of the case. And that is the application to run um, basically electrical um, power equipment underneath the Fry Creek um, so that the, the lot that Mr. Krummenacre owns um, that he wants to put four mini homes on, um, vacation rental homes, uh, so those homes can have power. And so, uh, you know, again, I've, I've noted all the objections and the reasons for the objections uh, primary, primarily by Mr. and Mrs. Pound and, and Mr. Hagedon. Um, regarding their concerns of this project, but I wanna make it clear that this particular hearing is just about the encroachment permit application of running that power equipment. Uh, 
lines so that those four vacation homes can have power. And so, you know, I, I note a lot of the concern is the future aspects of the project of everything from sewer lines to parking to uh, increased noise pollution and boat traffic and uh, the water, uh, you know, the different wildlife, including the fish population and the birds of prey and, and so forth. And so there's a lot of concerns regarding the future impacts of the overall project of having those um, four vacation homes on that property and everything that comes with it. And then as part of that is there's concerns that there have been past um, trespasses and, and certain violations and missteps um, regarding the project up to this point. And I do note that all of the agencies that um, were given the application had no comments and no concerns regarding the running of the, the electrical lines under Fry Creek, except there was a comment by the Department of Environmental Quality that specified they have no concerns regarding the project um, application at hand of those power lines, but they echo a lot of the same concerns that the landowners and objectors, um, objectors noted, and that is the other environmental impacts that could potentially come from uh, completing the project. And that as of now, my understanding is that there is no master plan of how those other things will be addressed. But under issue uh, that we're talking about for the hearing is strictly about the permit application of running those electrical lines underneath Fry Creek. And so with all that being said, I, I wanna let everyone get a chance now to start weighing in with their, their testimony. Cause I know, you know with, there's a lot of preliminary items that I'm covering and I only wanna uh, test your patience and the cooperation so far. And I do want to hear what you have to say. So uh, the way this will work is I first want to go to the Department of Lands to get their testimony. And then we'll hear from the objectors, uh, Mr. Hagedone and Mr. and Mrs. Pound. And then we'll give uh, Mr. Krummenaker a chance to, to give his side after we've heard from the two objectors in the Idaho Department of Lands. So that's the way uh, I think it makes the most sense to run it at this point. And so um, this is not a courtroom. Um, I just wanna give a chance for everyone to say what they need to say. And so I have enough information to make an informed decision on this matter. With that being said, um, anyone that plans to speak on a hearing, I will swear you in. Um, and that's kind of the more courtroom type formality that, that we do as part of this hearing. So with that being said, let's go to Ms. Kaufman um, and Mr. Almer, and we can get their testimony if they have any, and then we can, can get to the other parties. So Ms. Kaufman, did you have anything to present um, as part of this hearing? And again, I note your exhibits that you submitted um, as, as part of this hearing, um, but I didn't know if you had any testimony that you, you wanted to, to give. So Ms. Kaufman, let's go to you first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hearing Officer. This is Angela Kaufman, Deputy Attorney General. For the record, I represent the Idaho Department of Finance. I do not myself have any testimony to provide this evening. Um, however, uh, Mr. Amer is, would like to provide some testimony on behalf of the department. It's going to consist in part on uh, of the exhibit that we previously provided, the written statement, but I think he has some additional um, thoughts or information that he'd like to um, provide in addition. Okay, that is fine. So uh, Mr. Mike Amer, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth today? I do, Mr. Hearing Officer. All right, thank you. So go ahead and proceed. As uh, Ms. Kaufman said, uh, I'll be reading a prepared statement. It has changed a little bit since it was submitted several days ago in light of a lot of the recent comments that have been submitted. Uh, I will skip over uh, some of the sections in the statement. I won't read the entire timeline, and I also won't read all the applicable legal provisions. Um, those things really haven't changed at all. I would like to note up this, at the start that Jason Johnson and the planning department at Bonner County were emailed copies of this application. Um, so with that, I'll start my statement. And like I said, uh, Mr. Hearing Officer, at the close of the hearing, I will make sure to contact the hearing coordinator, Courtney Remine, to make sure you get a copy of the updated statement. Um, and with that, I will start my statement. 
Good evening, my name is Mike Amer. I'm a Lands Resource Supervisor for the MICA Supervisory Area Office at the Idaho Department of Lands. And I am the supervisor of the Navigable Water Programs at IDL. My purpose in being here today is to provide you with information regarding IDL's assessment of application for encroachment permit number L96S2633 filed by Troy Krumenacker, Troy's Mini Barns, Krumenacker. Application. Krumenacker is seeking an encroachment permit with Avista Utilities to bore under Fry Creek to provide power to his lot. The boring will be a minimum of four feet below the bed of Fry Creek. We'll start on the west side of Fry Creek on a Bonner County right of way for Greenwood Drive and then daylight on Krumenacker's property. An alternate route through an adjacent homeowner association was attempted, but the HOA refused to grant an easement. The initial application came from Avisa Utilities as they were the utility company doing the work. However, after consultation with IDL's Department of Attorney General, IDL requested that the application be switched into Krumenacker's name as he is the Toral owner of the Upland property. As I said before, I'll skip the timeline. Just note that some of the timeline is missing some of the stuff, some of the submittals that were recently submitted. I'm going to skip to section three of the statement, which is on my page six, and that is IDL's analysis of the application's compliance with the LPA and LPA rules. This is a section that has changed since it was originally submitted. IDL has some additional questions that we would like addressed to better understand the project. It should be noted that while these questions may not be specific to the Lake Protection Act and IDAPA standards I, that discussed above, this information will help better describe the project and provide a more detailed application. Question one, how deep is Fry Creek in the middle of the channel during both high water and low water? Question two, can you please confirm that there are no docks being proposed as part of this application? I state that Mr. Hearing Officer because in some of the drawings that were submitted, there are docks. And while the, the docks do look, appear crossed out, I would just like confirmation that no docks are being proposed as part of this application. Number three, please provide the distances to adjacent neighboring docks from the center line of the utility pipeline. Question four, please provide the dimensions of the boring hole created to do the work as well as the pipeline size. And the fifth question, please indicate if the work will be done in summer of 2021 and would still be under the submitted Bonner County Road and Bridge Department's utility permit which states that work will be completed on or before June 15th of 2021. At the, outset, at the outset, IDL notes that the concerns, a lot of the concerns raised by the objectors primarily include upland issues over which IDL has no jurisdiction, such as trespassing through private property, where future residents may park their vehicles, and how future cabins may or may not be able to be built on a floodplain. IDL has no jurisdiction over issues above the ordinary artificial high water mark. We would like to recognize DEQ and neighbors have raised concerns over past activities, but we are here today to talk about this application as it relates to the Lake Protection Act and IDAPA rules. Section A, littoral ownership. Krumenacker owns two adjacent littoral parcels on Lake Ponderay, but he is applying for the boring project on the following parcel. Parcel ID number RP57N02W357100A with approximately 250 feet of water frontage. Krumenacker is therefore a littoral owner with littoral rights. B, type of encroachment. Krumenacker is seeking encroachment permit to allow Avista Utilities to bore under Fry Creek to provide power to his lot. The boring will be a minimum of four feet below the bed of Fry Creek and will start on the west side of Fry Creek on a Bowner County right of way for Greenwood Drive and daylight on Krumenacker's property. The application type would be considered a non-navigational encroachment. Shoreline length. IDAPA 20.03.04 does not have any specific requirements for minimum shoreline length for non-navigational encroachments. D, square footage of encroachments. IDAPA 20.03.04 does not have any specific requirements for square footage, minimums or maximums for non-navigational encroachments. 
E, line of navigability. The proposed work would take place under the bed of Fry Creek and therefore would not affect or impact the line of navigability for Fry Creek. F, distance from littoral lines. This is a unique project in regards to littoral lines as the work that starts on the west side of Fry Creek will be within a Bonner County right of way and Krumenacker has Bonner County's permission for the work. Additionally, Krumenacker owns a little bit in this area as to what IDL refers to as private submerged lands. Private submerged lands were created when the Albany Falls Dam was installed and raised the level of Lake, Pond Lake Ponderay. As a result, Lake Ponderay has an artificial high water mark as well as an ordinary high water mark. When the dam was constructed, some waterfront owners accepted compensation and their properties stop at the artificial high water mark, while other owners did not accept the compensation and they actually own lake bed between the artificial high water mark and ordinary high water mark. The project commences in the right of way, bores under Fry Creek and daylights in the middle of Krumenacker's upland parcel. IDL has determined that the project meets any setback requirements from adjacent littoral lines. G, compliance with policy. And this is referring to IDAPA 20.03.04.012.01. The proposed project will consist of a power slash utility line that we board under Fry Creek. There will be no portion of the power utility line that is visible within the banks of Fry Creek as the line originates in a county right of way on the upland and daylights on Crewman Knacker's upland parcel. According to IDAPA 20.03.04.012.01, IDL shall regulate encroachments for the protection of property, navigation, fish and wildlife habitat, aquatic life, recreation, aesthetic beauty, and water quality. IDL relies on its sister agencies who have experience in fish and wildlife habitat and water quality, along with upland issues such as parking and access. Agencies with that expertise include the Idaho Department of Fish and Game, Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, Idaho Transportation Department, and Bonner County. IDL submitted a copy of the application to IDFG who are the state's experts on fish and wildlife. IDF, IDFG did not have any comments on or express any concerns regarding this project. IDL submitted a copy of the application to IDEQ, who are the state's experts on water quality. IDEQ did not have any comments on or express any concerns regarding this project. Bonner County has issued a utility permit to Avista for the proposed work allowing Krumenacker and Avista to use Greenwood Avenue as the origination point for the utility line. The utility line will be buried at a minimum of four feet below the bed of Fry Creek. Therefore, it will not be visible to the boating public and will not affect aesthetic beauty, navigation, or recreation. Section four, conclusion. Based upon IDL's review of the application, agency comments, and public comments, IDL concludes that this application satisfies the applicable requirements of the Lake Protection Act and Lake Protection Act rules. That is all I have for my statement, Mr. Hearing Officer. All right, and I have a quick question and thank you for that um, testimony and summary of your report. So in terms of the five questions that, that you wanted in terms of the dimensions and um, how deep Fry Creek is in the middle and so forth, does that affect your recommendation for approval? No, it does not, Mr. Hearing Officer. The, the, the information that IDL re requested does not have any bearing on the applicable IDAPA and LPA rules, but as I stated, it will help provide a clear picture of the, of the project. Okay. And I had a kind of a follow-up question. In terms of um, the Department of Lands, approval of, of applications like this, is there any sort of requirement that, how do I say this, that, that the entire project has to be approved for this one aspect? So what we're having a hearing about is the proposal to put utility lines under Fry Creek. The next part of the project obviously will be other things of building and constructing those or tiny homes and structures uh, that would include water and sewage and anything else that is necessary to construct those. And so there's a complete project that will follow after um, 
these utility lines are put in, does the Department of Lands require having an approved total project that includes those structures before it can improve, approve this application of just a utility line? Does my question make sense? I was kind of- It, it, it does, Mr. Hearing Officer. No, it does. We've been discussing this, uh, especially with the hearing we had yesterday as well. I would defer my, the question and the answer to my counsel, Angela Kaufman. Okay. Uh, thank you. So um, a standard practice of the Idaho Department of Lands is to include a term in any permit issued that specifies that the issuance of the permit does not excuse compliance with other applicable laws and rules. So that's one aspect of it. And then to respond to the other aspect of your question, the Department of Lands does not require a uh, complete approval package from the other agencies with jurisdiction before it issues a permit. However, I would note that typically also uh, permits will sunset within a three year period of time. So there is a possibility that if um, the applicant is unable to obtain all the necessary approvals for the project, uh, potentially the, the permit would sunset at that point. Okay. And so to summarize is that if this application is approved to run the utility line under Wright Creek, that does not mean, well, that, that still means that any other part of the project would still have to be in compliance with, our, with the, whatever the relevant rules are, you know, whether that's building the structure or sewage or anything else. And if this application is approved with a three year time limit that the project would have to be completed within three years or just the utility line would have to be completed within three years? It's primarily, it would primarily be the utility line that would have to be completed within that time period. Um, okay. And frankly, I don't know how all those other approvals would fit with the running of the utility line. I know there's all sorts of timing issues in okay. there, so. Okay, all right, well, that makes sense. So thank you for, for that clarification. Uh, Mr. Then, Hearing Officer, would it be helpful if I reread the questions one more time? Sure. Okay. How deep is Fry Creek in the middle of the channel during both high water and low water? Can you please confirm that there are no docks being proposed as part of this application? Please provide the distances to adjacent neighboring docks from the center line of the utility pipeline. Please provide the dimensions of the hole created by the boring as well as the pipeline size. And please indicate if the work will be done in summer of 2021 and would still be under the Bonner County Road and Bridge De Department's utility permit, which states that work will be completed on or before June 15th of 2021. Okay, thank you, Mr. Amer. All right, well, um, let's, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, if I could, I neglected to do something at the outset when we were going through introductions, which is um, we have an extern with our office this summer. His name is Fred Coriel. He is also on the call. He's in a different location than um, Mr. Amer and I, but I, I just wanted you to be aware that he is our extern. He's not here to testify as a member of the public. He's just here, um, here to learn. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. And then one thing I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but I'll, I'll mention it now just in case. I uh, just want to let everyone know that this hearing is recorded. It is happening via Zoom, but it is recorded and, and part of the official record of this case. All right. So let's go to Mr. Kremenaker uh, and give him a chance to weigh in here. And um, I'll first ask you, Mr. From an anchor, uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth this evening? Yes, yes, I do. All right, thank you. And so, uh, Mr. Amer from the Department of Lands has some questions regarding your project. And if you're prepared to answer those questions right now, I'm sure everyone would appreciate it. Um, yes, so that'd be fine. Okay. And so that would be great. Uh, you don't have to answer those questions right off the bat uh, if you wanted to. Uh, if you had a narrative that you wanted to start with or, or just to give generally your side of, of the issue here, that's fine as well. Um, but basically, I'm giving you a, 
an opening to say whatever you need to say regarding the issue at hand regarding your application and then some of the concerns that have been raised by the objectors as well as those five questions that the Department of Lands would, would like to know. So go ahead and begin when you're ready and, and uh, go ahead and address whatever you want to first. Okay. Well, I've been trying to work with everyone in Golden Meadows and on the other side of the creek. I had a meeting at Golden Meadows with the association about trying to bring power in on that side. Um, and after several meetings with them, they decided they didn't want, they thought it was a viable route to go across Fry Creek. So then I worked on the other side to went kind of door to door at talking to the people about my project and what I was doing. And I do have a letter stating that they're okay with me bringing the power across. And I can show you that letter. And that, that's a- uh, I don't know if you have it or not. And that's an adjacent landowner? Well, I have two letters. This is uh, from the Harborview Homeowners Association. Do you have that letter? Let me look for it. Um, if you would go ahead and read the contents of it, I mean, just the main points. Well, I, I probably do have it. Just, it. We, the members of Harbor Homeowners Association, grant you access across the lake to bring in power and to bring in rock ripraft. And then it says, uh, basically, they want the, the property put back the way I started, which I did um, during that the rock be, project. Okay. But and that would be even though they have that letter, the my property butts right up to the county road, which Green Greenville butts all the way to the county road. And several of the neighbor's docks are on my property, like five, five docks are on my property. And I talked to a lot of the owners over there and I told them not to worry that I wasn't gonna do anything about their docks and their docks are fine. And just because my pro property, their docks are all on my property, everything was okay. I just wanna uh, build these beautiful little cabins for summer use and, and definitely I wanna let everyone know that it's strictly boat access. There's no vehicles being parked or, or anything like that. But I do have rights to the road, just like anyone else. My property butts right up to that road, even though it's underwater, just like the neighbors do on the harbor side. And do you have your own dock or would these people I, be using- I, I did get some- dock? bids on putting in docks on the other side. So I okay. do have two bids to put in docks in the future. Okay, but if I'm understanding you correctly, once these four vacation homes are built, they will have docks. They will have docks. Okay. Correct. Okay. And there'll be okay. one dock on the creek side and one dock on the other piece of property on the high water side. Okay. So they're coming from across the water from one dock to another dock and these new docks will be part of the tiny home project. Correct, and that'll be the only parking is on our personal docks. Okay, okay, thank you. And then I had a question, when you were saying from the Harbor Home Association, they're granting you access from across the lake. And well, so- they were granting me access to use, to. They were granting me access, but they don't really have the access. You know, it's the county road and okay. the county road butts to my property. But mm -hmm. being concerned, I went to them and said, hey, I'm going to be doing this rock job. I'm going to be doing this. Mm -hmm. And I try to work with them to the my best ability to uh, propose that and then do the rip raft. And then I went on to the power. I said, well, I want to bring power across too. And I let them know at that point that Golden Meadows was not going to grant me an easement across their property. Okay. I worked real hard on getting the easement across Golden Meadows. Uh, I had a Brent Featherstone, my lawyer, 
write some letters to them, some proposals, offered them several options, and they kindly turned me down, which I have a letter also from that. Okay. I wasn't aware I was supposed to submit all these letters. I could have done that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, so basically, I'm just at this point, I'm just trying to get the power across so I can move on to other things. Okay. And just as a point of curiosity, if if your application is granted for the the power, mm -hmm. how realistically long will this total project take? Well, I'll bring the power over right away as soon as I can get a borer. So that would be right away. And then I'm also trying to get the application with the building department for the structures, which I don't need water and sewer, but I also would be putting in another application behind this to try to bore the water and sewer front across Fry Creek. I do have an additional letter stating if I can bore across the sewer and water will hook up. I got a letter stating that they'll hook me up if I can get across, but I don't have to have that. I can put a shallow well on the property and I could also store the sewer in a holding tank okay. if, if necessary. Okay. And so I don't so have to have an addition, additional application for sewer and water. It would be nice to have that. Gotcha. And so servicing the sewer, that's where a company would come out from time to time and, and serve it and have maintenance. Via yes, there's someone thing. on the lake that comes out and pumps and he'd mm -hmm. come out when accordingly to have okay. it pumped. Gotcha. And, okay. you know, just trying to make these little summer cabins, it's only going to be used two to four months a year tops. Mm -hmm. And they're real small and real cute and, you know, real cabiny. And, and I don't have to build all four. I'm just saying I'm going to build all five. I plan on just building two at the moment, mm -hmm. one on each partial with the dock. But the first step was to get power across, which mm -hmm. I've been trying to do. And it's power across my property, you know, I'm not, and I've, I have talked to the road department, went in and talked to them and they're okay with it. And I have talked to uh, Jason at Department of Lands and he's all on board, you know, for what I'm doing. He's happy that I'm doing it. And I'm just trying to, uh, and then, you know, the rip raft, uh, some of the neighbors had some issues with it but I was trying to do the right thing. It was polluting Fry Creek. Every time the winds came up, it took the shoreline, which was like silt and, and all of Fry Creek got muddy and this and that. So in a way I was putting the rip raft up, but I was also trying to solve a problem for everyone in Fry Creek. Okay. Because of the uh, drastic, you know, every time a storm came, it just, just ate away the shoreline like crazy. So I saw a problem and I was trying to solve it more than anything else. Okay, and can you address the questions that Mr. Amer had regarding- I can address of some of them. The, the center of Fry Creek, I'd say it would be tops 15 feet deep. I can find that out for sure or get a survey if necessary. Um, okay. The closest dock to where they're boring would be about 30 feet away. And the dock is on my property, but it's, you know, I'm letting the neighbors just have the docks and, and um, not doing anything. Okay. And then, and then, Let's skip to his last question and then we'll go back to the others. Okay. Um, will this be done in 2021? Yes. Okay. I'm just making some notes here on my end, so bear with me. Okay, Mr. Amer, let's go back to you real quick. So he, he said how deep it is in the middle and he confirmed, well, he said 30 feet to the closest dock and then yes, the project will be built in 2021. Could you ask the questions again regarding the distance and dimensions 
in the confirmation of no docs. So make sure we get that right. You're, you're speaking to me, correct, Mr. Hearing Officer? Yes, okay. Mr. Amer, thank you. Okay. okay. Can you please confirm that there are no docs being proposed as part of this application? And can you please provide the dimensions of the Let's, hole cre created by the board? Mr. Amer, sorry to interrupt. Let, if, if you could ask the question one at a time and let's go back to Mr. Krummenacker and let him respond and then we'll go back to another question. So the first question is confirmation that no docs are being proposed as part of this application to run the utility line under Fry Creek. No, no docs were proposed at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then please provide the dimensions of the hole created by the boring as well as the pipeline size. A VISTA might be better to answer that. Maybe we could have Don, Donnie speak, answer that question. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay. And what's your last name, Don? I forgot. My name is Donnie Peterson. Okay, and Don. I'm, uh, yeah, Don Peterson, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth today? Yes, I do. All right, and I understand you're the contractor on this job, correct? Correct. Okay, um, yeah, so if, if you understood Mr. Amos' question, if you could address it. Yeah, the um, conduit that's going to be bored underneath. I mean, if you want to get technical, the steel that bores underneath the the bed of the river is two and three quarter inches across at its widest point. And then once they get to where they daylight on Mr. Krumenacher's property, they pull back a two inch conduit, which is roughly two and five eighths inches in diameter. So that's, that's the sizes we're looking at. And um, the transformer that sits on Mr. Krummenacher's property is of the specification that is full of peanut oil in case of any submersion problem or anything like that, if that should occur. It would be all natural oils. Okay, thank you. Mr. Amer, I believe they've answered all of your questions. I heard five answers to five questions, but I, I, I'm not sure. Um, was, was there any other information that you were inquiring about at this time, Mr. Amer? No, no, thank you, Mr. Hearing Officer. I got the answers I needed. Okay, thank you. All right, well, let's go back to Mr. Kromenaker. Was there anything else you wanted to say at this time? Um, just that I, I've been real upfront and to all the neighbors, I've talked to several neighbors on both sides and I've attended meetings over at Mountain Meadows and I kind of just let everyone aware of what I was doing and, you know, how I was doing it in this and that. Okay. I've just been uh, trying to just be a good person about everything, you know, about the dock situation with all the docks on my property, being real nice about that to all the neighbors, uh, being real nice to Golden Meadows during our meetings, trying to get the power going that direction, you know, offering to put in docks or fix up their beach or put in parking areas or, or do whatever they needed to help their community. Um, and that's probably why they wrote me such a nice letter stating that uh, uh, thanks for sharing everything with me. And same with uh, Harborview, they were thankful uh, that I shared everything with them also at, the, at that time. All right, well, thank you. All right, well, let's um, give the objectors a chance to, to weigh in here. And with that, I just wanna reiterate that, that I did read the letters of the objectors, both of Mr. and Mrs. Pound, as well as Mr. Hagedone. And I've, you know, I've, I've gone through the letters several times and, and, and noted some of the reasons that they uh, have concerns about this project. And I wanna reiterate that the purpose of this hearing is whether the encroachment permit for that utility line under Fry Creek um, 
complies with rules and regulations. And so um, that's what we're going to stick to. And, and really, the issue is not really about anything else um, that, that we have jurisdiction over for this hearing. So with that kind of caveat, let's go to Mr. Hagedon first, and then we'll hear from Mr. and Mrs. Pound. Um, so Mr. Hagedon, um, I'll ask you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth today? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. And so um, I have your objection letter in front of me, and you, know, you can certainly highlight any main points from that if you want to, or if you want to um, add anything additional to that, you're free to do that as well. But uh, let's you know, give you a chance now to say what you need to say. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, one thing I'd like to get out in the open is I do not belong to the Harborview uh, uh, Property Owner Association. and I do not belong to the Golden Meadows uh, Association either. I'm on the other side of Fry Creek on Lakewood. My property uh, borders the Garner County uh, right away on Greenwood. And I received the letter in the mail about this uh, utility line. Um, I was not contacted by Mr. Krummenhocker about this particular part of the project. I was uh, approached by him in uh, 2020 about moving riprap to his property from my property, which I denied because I wasn't really sure what the project was until I investigated to find out because uh, it's really important that we know what the end result of this project is. I realized that Avista's obligation is to put this power line in and they really aren't concerned about the end product. But uh, homeowners in this area are uh, concerned about the end product. Um, I've talked to some homeowners in the Harborview uh, development area and I've talked to homeowners in the Golden Meadows area and there are concerned folks from both places. Um, it's too bad that Mr. Krummenarka couldn't have given you the copies of those letters so we could have all seen those from both those developments. I would think that would be an important thing to see uh, as for all of us. I, I also understand that you do not want me to talk about this project except for uh, the power line installation. Um, I did have a conversation with Merritt Horseman. He's the IDFG uh, biologist that was uh, initially contacted for this. Merritt had no idea that this project had not gone forward when he was contacted, that he thought it was already a done deal when I talked to him. Um, I let him know that it was still ongoing and he said, well, his concerns were, uh, this is West Slope cutthroat trout spawning grounds and that he was concerned if they were to bore this during high water, it would not be a good idea, according to him. Um, you're welcome to contact him and talk to him. And I have an email from him that says that. Uh, he thinks that if this project does go forward with the pouring of the, of the utility line, it needs to be done at low water, not at high water. And that's his concern. I have a lot of concerns, but as you said, you don't want to talk about that, that we've already gone through that and you've seen my letter and my exhibits. And they're mainly about the end product, which is for homes on a floodplain. And I personally have seen this property flooded every year that it's flooded after the dams were in, 1972 to 2018, because I have had property on this Fry Creek since 1968. And I know that this property has been flooded with two feet minimum and to three feet in some years. And that's a concern. I realized that Mr. Krummenarka wanted to put riprap up to protect this property. Uh, anyone that has seen low water here in Fry Creek knows that all of this basin area is constructed of mud, clay, and sand. And when the waves come in, it washes all that. It's a natural effect. It's not something that could be controlled. But I know a lot of property owners want to riprap their property to keep their property from washing out or having sand there or whatever they need. From what I understand from the Army Corps of Engineers, Mr. Krummenacher broke the uh, permit. He violated the permit for that riprap. Uh, they are not in this particular hearing right now, but I have statements from 
members of the Army Corps that Mr. Kromenacher did not follow the permit correctly. And I believe IDL is aware of that. So he is in violation of that permit. Um, if you don't want me to talk about any of the rest of this uh, that I wanted to talk about tonight, I won't. But I'm really concerned about this project and where it's going and what the final result is gonna be. And Mr. Steve Holt with Lake Padre Waterkeeper was going to be here and make a statement. He sent a letter into his exhibits. Uh, he's asked me to make a statement because he is actually ill. Um, if I may state this. Sure. All right. IDL hearing comments. Hi, my name is Steve Holt and I am the executive director of the Lake Pondre Waterkeeper. Our organization has existed for just over a decade and simply put, our mission is to protect the water quality of the Clark Fork Pondre watershed so that our waterways remain swimmable, fishable and drinkable. Lake Pondre Waterkeeper submitted written comments regarding our concerns and we will let those comments stand. However, I do want to reiterate how important it is for all the agencies involved to get the best and most accurate information possible especially when it comes to sh uh, shoreline development. The more one looks into the history of this project and the more one uh, soon realizes that Mr. Krummerucker has a complete disregard for both the process and the environment, I strongly urge the Idaho Department of Lands to require that Mr. Krummerucker submit a complete application for the entire project in order for all government agencies, environmental organizations and local citizens to better understand the potential impacts this project could have on the local community and the environment. Sincerely, Steve Holt. All right, thank you. And I, I do want to note that Steve Holt did submit exhibits um, for this case that I'm looking at right now. And I did read before the hearing and there were exhibits one, two, three. And um, it's about 11 pages in length. And he did say, you know, some of the main points that um, we just heard it, as well as some others. And so that is part of the record here. I have read that and will consider it again when I'm writing the decision on this matter. So thanks for reading his statement and, and know that I have his documentation about 11 pages worth in, in the case file. Was there anything else that you, you wanted to say? I have a lot to say, but as you said, you didn't want to hear the rest of this uh, because it doesn't have anything to do with the power line. So I will not. Well, do you have anything additional to say regarding, um, you know, in addition to your written objection? Because I have your written objection, you know, in the record as well that I've read and, and will consider it as part of the hearing. Um, I mean, it's part of the order that I write and, you know, um, all of those points are in there. Um, if you wanted to highlight some of those, which I think you already have, um, you're welcome to express anything new or anything that else that you wanted to say. Um, just know that it is part of the record that, that we already are considering. Actually, uh, I don't have anything else that I want to say. I think I've said everything I need to in my uh, statements and my exhibits, but uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to be in this public hearing. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Hagedon. Well, let's go to Mr. and Mrs. Pound and, and give you a chance to weigh in here and, and you hear have me? your- I, I apologize. My camera for some reason is not working. That's okay. And. Um, you know, as long as we can hear you, which we can hear you loud and clear, that's the main thing. Um, so we can hear your voice and, and get that. And so I have your seven page letter in front of me, um, you know, going over the, the main points of your objection. And so um, if there's anything else you want to add or anything else you want to highlight from that, um, go ahead and do so now. And let me just ask you, I don't know if your wife is planning to speak or not. But I'll ask you, uh, Mr. James Pound, if you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth today. I do. Thank you. I do as well. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Pound. you, Mr. Strahan. I appreciate you taking the time for this. Uh, for the record, my name is James Pound. I live at 127 Greenwood Avenue, Sagal, Idaho, 83860. First, I would like to comment on, on a reference comments to Mr. Krumenacher. Uh, who did not receive any letter from this side of the creek saying that it was all right for him to proceed with this electrical installation. The HOA can say anything they want. They're not part of this. They're on the other side of the creek. And uh, so therefore, uh, it's a, it, that letter is a moot point. Likewise, his comment that 
the uh, right of way, the, the, the power line is going to go down Greenwood Avenue uh, to, the shore, to the shore of Fry Creek is incorrect. Uh, the uh, Greenwood Avenue ends above Fry Creek and the land below is not part of Greenwood Avenue. It is, it is, not, it is not a road. It's county right away. Likewise, I would like to comment regarding the statement that the um, state of Idaho uh, regulatory response regarding property ownership under navigable waters. I understand that there were rules and regulations and statutes passed back in the 1950s when the dam was built and the high water mark increased on Lake Ponderé. However, in 2012, the U.S. Supreme Court in PPL Montana LLC versus Montana ruled nine to zero that all navigable waters within the United States are either property of the state of Idaho or the state, in our, in our case, the state of Idaho upon or the federal government. And it is only the property of the state of Idaho if it was navigable at the time of statehood. So therefore the property underneath Fry Creek is according to the US Supreme Court property of the federal government. Did you get that case number? I, I did. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Just one. I, I have. I'm sorry. I have the rest of it. I should have done it properly. I apologize. It's no, a, that's okay. 2010 Montana 64, 355 Montana 402, 229 P3, 421 uh, reversed and remanded. And let me just ask you on on that subject. I guess what is your point? regarding the ownership of the state or federal government that- The, the fact um, of the matter is, is the way this application is stated, it is on it is on county property and privately owned. Mr. Krumenacher has repeatedly said that he owns the land underneath Fry Creek. Unfortunately, because of that ruling, he does not. If it was sold to him with that understanding, whoever sold it to him mis misrepresented what the land was. Okay, thank you. Okay. Again, as Mr. Hagenon and their parts of, of background and stuff, which I believe you have in letters, Mr. Mr. Krumenacher has repeatedly shown that he has little regard for the for government agencies. He has shown that to Bonner County, where they tell him to cease and desist. He waits until the weekend when there's no one at work and comes out and works on the property. He did that several times last year. I am sure that is a trend that will continue. Give me just a second. Let me get specifically to the, the issue at hand, if you don't mind. The, inf the information you have regarding violations uh, are good to have on the record. I believe you as an attorney general uh, and, and under your oath of upholding the laws of the state of Idaho need to pass that on to the attorney generals responsible for those particular crimes uh, for investigation. And I hope you do that. Uh, with regard to the issue itself, to date, it is my belief that a VISTA does not have a secured necessary easements from the corner of Harborview and Greenwood. Both are privately maintained roads. Easements may be obtained through a conveyance of a deed, a contract, or a will. None of that has taken place. An underwater electric line in a navigable waterway is unacceptable dealing with the limited depth of the water. Electromagnetic fields, or EMFs, have shown to cause electrosensitive reactions to aquatic life. These EMFs will disrupt spawning of aquatic life from use, uh, that use Fry Creek. That is outlined in Faraday's law, which you have in my attachment. Likewise, EMFs have been shown to potentially represent hazardous conditions to humans swimming near the line. Children daily ride behind boats attached to float devices. These electric pulses have been known to interfere with human nervous systems, causing temporary paralysis and leading to drowning. This is from a report from the National Fire Protection Association dated May 23rd, 2018. Encroachments under public navigable waters must fall within the guidelines established in the public trust doctrine outlined in Title 58, Chapter 12, Title 73, Chapter 116. Likewise, in Chapter 2813, legislative intent 
clear, excuse me, uh, Title 58, I apologize, legislative intent clearly states what ridiculous restrictions are placed on encroachments under navigable waters. Nearly everything in the proposal falls under those restrictions and is further restricted as an encroachment does not assist in navigation and may actually interfere with electronic devices used for navigation by watercraft. Also, we have aluminum hauled watercraft coming up and down Fry Creek on a regular basis. Under the IDAPA 133002, processing of the application clearly states that encroachments not in aid of navigation will normally not be approved by the department and will only be considered for the benefit of the general public. This proposal does not meet the general public uh, criteria. This is included with an incomplete application. Therefore, I thoroughly say this application should be rejected. And those are my comments, sir. I, I would like to make a few okay. comments. Um, cool. We, as my husband stated, we live at 127 Greenwood Avenue, Sagal. We are not part of any HOA. This property has been owned by my family since the late 40s. Um, I'm not a conservationist. I'm not a tree hugger. But I do believe in the regard of having regard for wildlife habitat, other people's property, and water quality. Mr. Krumenacher has no compunction about backing equipment over nesting quails, eggs, and nests. He has no compunction about getting rid of ducks' nests. He has no compunction about getting rid of um, goose nests. He's like, oh, they'll come back next year. It's fine. So that does have to do with all the different qualities and the land use. Um, I was personally told, I don't know how much she pays these people, but I was personally told by the Road and Bridge, by the director of Road and Bridge for Bonner County, that Mr. Kumanacher can do absolutely anything he wants, absolutely anywhere he wants, anytime he wants, and does not have to seek approval. I don't think this is correct. I think that should be investigated. Um, at one point, Mr. Kumanacher told us personally that he was going to come in and cut down all of the trees between the end of Greenwood Road and the creek because that would make it easier for him to get his guests in. That, that we did manage to get him shut down through Road and Bridge because we have proof it's eagle habitat. But he still wants those trees gone. He, um, he really is not a good steward of anything to do with water quality. He used an ex his excavator to dig out the bottom of the creek to accommodate his 45 foot long barge that he uses as a dock on that property. And he puts it out to where it blocks over half the creek. And that really is all I have to say. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pound. Mrs. Pound, excuse me. All right, well, let's go back to Mr. Krimenaker, and you're not required to do this. Well, I'd like you to, to, you can I'd like to answer a few of those questions. Okay. I ne never had no intent of taking any trees out. The reason you why I was using you were gonna cut them down. area was just to, let's, just let's to, use it, to, talk. to use it for three days. And the project ran a little long, but to use it for a few days to barge rocks across, which I let all the neighbors, the neighbors on both sides know the day I was doing it and when I was doing it. Um, I did not destroy any bird's nest or duck's nest or anything. In fact, I parked out the property to my, the best of my ability leaving half the trees and parking it out so it was pretty for everyone. So when anyone came down the creek, they could enjoy the view of the property. 
And then as far as the property, I am being taxed for four point, I got the information here in my folder, four point something acres and the land is only less than a third of it. So I'm being taxed by the county for approximately four acres, which is 95% underwater. So if I'm not the owner of that, I probably should talk to the county about um, them taxing me for it. And I, I've been trying very hard to, to keep everyone aware of what I was doing and how I was doing it. And I've been trying to do the right thing throughout the project. Yes, I had a problem with the permit because I went through the Department of Lands and got my permit and Jason said I was good to go. Found out later that I needed an additional permit from the city, which I got the additional permit. And I also got Sewell Engineering, which I should have added as an exhibit to uh, design the riprap that I was installing. And I also ca called the Department of Lands and let them know what I was doing on the, on the rip raft. And I, I tried to do the rip raft and the landscaping to the best of my ability. I tried very hard to do the right thing throughout. Um, the barge is not parked there. It was only used for three days or it was only used during the construction of the rip raft only. So stating that the barge is there blocking boats is incorrect. Stating that I wanted to cut, cut down a tree is incorrect. Stating that I don't own the property when I'm paying taxes on is incorrect. And say, stating that I did not try to work with these neighbors is incorrect because I let them know day to day what I was doing and how I was doing it. And when I finished the riprap, I put back the property to the best of my ability until they were satisfied. I completely asked, are you satisfied? Do you want anything more done? Are we okay? So, such and such and et cetera. So I have tried very hard to work with everyone throughout this project. And I do care about the lake and I do care about people and I do care. I'm not a non-caring person, I'm a very emotional, caring person. I just wanted to state that so you didn't get the opinion that I don't care because I did. And, and at the moment, I'm just getting, I could apply for my building permit and make it completely self-sustaining. I could have generators, have my own water, can have my own sewer, but I don't think a generator running benefits anyone. You know, even if it's a silent generator, I don't think it benefits anyone to have four generators running over on the property if I do wind up getting my building permit. I don't see any benefit in that. That's it for now, I guess. So. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kumanecker. Well, let's I go just back to. to let you know that the statements were, you know, they're kind of hurtful to me, actually. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well, let's go back to the Department of Lens real quick and Ms. Kaufman and Mr. Amer. And I had a question regarding some of the concerns of the objectors um, regarding past performance, um, for lack of a better term, that there have been some issues with the permit and there's been complaints on, on how things have been done up to this point. How does the Department of Lands factor into that with granting a, a future work regarding the, the proposed utility line to go under Fry Creek? Is it a consideration? If so, um, how much? Or is it not a consideration at all? Um, I think I, uh, Mike asked me to, to take a stab at this one. Um, so there would be a distinction, I think, between uh, 
past non-compliance with an IDL permit or failure to get a permit that was under IDL's jurisdiction versus uh, failure to get permits under other entities' jurisdictions. Um, in either circumstance, it's not good. I mean, IDL's uh, general philosophy, of course, is that you should get the permits that you need in order to do the work that you're doing. But um, faced with matters strictly under the Department of Land's jurisdiction, um, it would issue a permit to somebody who had had past performance problems or permitting problems with other entities um, so long as, but, you know, obviously, as IDL does with all permits, they would keep a, a careful eye on it. So um, the lack of a permit um, or permitting problems with another state agency would not prevent IDL from issuing a permit in this circumstance. Um, in terms of the uh, what may have happened with the, the riprap, um, I don't know that IDL issued a permit or was asked to issue a permit. There's multiple jurisdictions sometimes that can go into the issuance of a permit for riprap. I'll just know that uh, Justin Eshelman, who is the IDL staff person designated for uh, Pondre, is actually out on parental leave right now. Mike supervisor is filling in but I don't know Mike do you know anything about the riprap permitting or I do know that he obtained the permit for riprap and through that riprap permit when Justin was processing it he submits it to all the agencies just as we did to this application and the Army Corps of Engineers would have received a copy of the application via email when Justin was processing it uh, we provide an, a copy of the application and we allow all agencies 30 days to provide public comment if we do not receive any comment within those 30 days, then we assume that they have no concerns. They have nothing to nothing to add to the project. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, that Would it be sense. okay if I had a Vista, Donnie, weigh in about the electrical pulse and stuff like that? Because sure. he would be knowledgeable in that perspective. And that would be one of the things they're objecting. Sure. Thank you. Um, I am, I'm not an agent of Mr. Kramenacher. I'm just here to uh, state or give technical support to what we're doing here, being the utilities to the, the peninsula that he's trying to um, build on. Um, as far as I know, we have currently at least one line that goes underneath the Ponderé Lake right now. And it goes out to the island in Hope. And there has been no issues in the last, I believe it was put in in 67, 68, somewhere in that time frame. I could definitely find that out for sure. And there hasn't been any incidents of anyone complaining or losing consciousness or pulsating or feeling nauseous any way, shape or form from said line. I have never in my 24 years experience have had any safety meeting or any talk or issue of this. This particular um, article that the Mr. Pound quoted would be news to me. I, I'm not all encompassing. I'm all not all knowing. So, um, but we do like to do business in this community. And if there was an imminent danger, that'd be something Avista would take extremely seriously. And we would advise not doing that in the future. And since there is no issue in our eyes, to going under the water. Um, that's, we, we're going off a of past experience in engineering, multiple years of engineers experience on that. Um, as far as Mr. Pound's um, concern with the public or the privately owned or maintained public right of way, I did submit, submit a permit through the county road and I was told 
because I asked them, do I even need to submit one? Because this looks like a lot of privately maintained area. And they said, even though it's maybe privately maintained, it's still a county right away. And if you plan on doing any or all work that is done by Avista, will need to be permitted through the county to do so. So we did get a county permit. I did state on there we would be doing it between June 1st and June 15th, only to give them a timeline of you know how long it may take. Um, waiting till low water isn't something that would be crazy to ask. Um, it might even make it easier. I just, I, as far as getting the power line across there, those are the two concerns that I heard that um, I just felt I should address, so. Okay, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Thank you. All right, and I'm just If you don't mind, sir, he re did not reference anything. To, uh, to, this is Jim Pound again. Yeah. Uh, anything regarding EMF? Uh, the the under, underwater line going out to the island at Hope is much, much deeper than 15 feet. Uh, well, if you count the depth of the water and the earth under it, the one out in Hope is actually lays on the bottom of the water. So it goes underground and once it gets out about 30 feet from shore, it's exposed just laying on the bottom. So if you're going to feel EMF, it's going to be there. How deep um, is it? This is going to be four feet under the earth, under the bottom of the lake. Okay, but Mr. Peterson, that other line you said exposed about how deep would that be at where it's exposed? So where it's exposed, it's roughly 15 to 20 feet deep worth of water. Okay. And that's on both ends, the shore and on the island. I would also add that when that, when that work was done, these studies had not been done to determine the dangers associated with underwater cables. And I can show you just as many studies that say EMF is not an issue. EMF is an issue for fish. There are that many studies to prove it. I, I understand. I apologize. No, uh, it's I apologize to the, to uh, Mr. Stronghauer. That's not, that's not what we're supposed to be doing here. All right. That's, that's okay. All right, was there anything else, Mr. Pound? No, sir, not at this time. Okay. All right. Well, I think at this point, we've, we've heard the main testimony of the main parties in this. And so, unless there's anything else that, that the main parties want to say, and that's the, the objectors, the two objectors, Idaho Department of Lands and Mr. Krumenacher, I'd like to open it up for public comment. So, can I, uh, um, can I interrupt for a minute? Yeah, go ahead. John Hagedon. I have a question for Mr. Peterson. Could I ask him a question? Yes. Uh, Donnie, would you rather run your line in from uh, Birch Banks and over on that side, or would you rather go under a creek? I'd love to run it from Birch Banks. Right. That's yep. kind of the optimum place to, to put that power line, isn't it? It is. is. The, only, the, only, the only problem is, is I don't own that land. I, right. There is no county right away, so, so I can't put it on private land. Right. So, so that's the, that's the that's the less least expensive place to put that, the least damage to anything, but that can't be done. It's well, be it, I guess I guess damage. If I come in from that direction, I would be opening up a trench, and not boring it. I mean, we could bore it, I guess, which would be identical, right? At the same cost, um, but. The cheapest way, you're right, would be to trench it from Birch Banks. And that would be ideal for a Vista, but it would be a lot more damage. Um, if we did in fact bore it, it, I think it's about the same distance. It, it's gonna be about the same damage for the bore for bore. I guess I guess your argument might be the fit and the EMF that Mr. Brown brought up, but, and that's, that's an argument that has to be brought up, you know, I mean, I get it. But ideally, yeah, we, we feel that it would be nice to go across the common area if we could. Um, and I think I did go to one of the meetings at Golden Meadows and everybody was really nice. I thought we had a really nice meeting. Um, 
and they just whispering. Yeah, and Mr. Kamenaka was there, and it was a great meeting. They just yeah, they just they had concerns about their property, and they just didn't want to do it. So, and that's fine too, you know. So that's why we're pursuing this avenue, you know. But I, I agree with your your statement. We would much rather do that. Thank you. Did you have any other questions? I do not. Okay. Sure, I have one more comment. Why okay. are the properties on the other side of the creek more important than the properties on this side of the creek? I'll just they're not. That. They're not. Apparently, apparently they are, sir. And that's, why that's do you comment. Anything's allowed. Why do you feel that way, Mr. Palm? Well, just the statement he just made. He said we want to make sure that we take care of the property owners on, and it's all on that side of the creek. There has been no the situation here, and why we are here is because last year or the year before, I take that back, Mr. Krumenacher, without permission, moved masticating equipment onto that property across their property lines and essentially trespassed. So we be, we began this entire operation with a criminal violation. Well, that had nothing so to do with the Vista. I know, know it has nothing to do with the Vista. And I, okay. I apologize. I didn't mean that. I'm talking about okay. Mr. Krumenacher. The fact of the matter is this entire operation has started out with criminal activity, be it trespassing or whatever. That is a misdemeanor in the state of Idaho. The only reason it has not been charged is because Bonner County officials refuse to file the charges. At the present time, if it happens again, we will be going to the state troopers. As I had advised you, I commented to, to our attorney uh, on thing, the information that he has does need to be passed on to other attorney generals for those departments for their for thorough investigation of, into all the violations, including uh, Idaho State Police. And I, I apologize, that's nothing to do with the VISTA. I agree, sir. That's it. Okay. All right. Well, at this point, let's let's open it up for uh, members of the public to comment. And it's fine if you don't want to comment. If you want to comment and not be on camera, that's fine as well. Um, this is really a courtesy for the people that that are interested in this matter, and and have been listening to everything that has been said up to this point. Um, you know, again, I, I ask you that you keep the comments to the issue at hand, and that is whether the application to run the utility line under Fry Creek uh, should be approved or denied, and if so, why? And so we have a lot of participants on the line, and so um, I think the way that makes the most sense to do this is just for me to call out names and and say if you want to make a comment or not, and so. If you have your microphone on mute, obviously you have to take it off mute um, to, to be able to, so we can hear you um, for your comment. And so um, let me just get to the visitors right now. Okay, so let's do this. Um, in, I'm just gonna go through um, the names that I see as on the screen. So this is not in alphabetical order. This is not in the order of which you called. It's just the order in which I see on the screen. And so uh, there's a, a, a K.R. Smith on the line. If you would like to make a comment, please unmute your mic. And no comment, uh, thank you. All right, thank you for that. All right, Patricia W., do you wish to make a comment? No comment. Thank you. Beverly Key, do you wish to make a comment? Yes, I do. Um, okay. Just to sort of add flavor to the hearing, I would dispute Mr. Krumenacher's uh, representation that he's attempted to be a good neighbor. We live, we have a residence at 111 Greenwood, which is north of the Harborview Acclaimed Homeowners Association. And we are next door to Jim and Debbie Pound. Our property faces out to Greenwood. Several times, Mr. Krumenacher would park his equipment there, block our driveway. We'd have to go find someone and ask them. We had no idea what was going on. 
At one time he had a trailer parked there that the sheriff had to come because the trailer was licensed in another state, expired four years ago. Anyway, that's just adding to the flavor. My next questions are for Danny, Donnie Peterson of Avista. Greenwood Road, I'm sure you've been out to visit the site. The utilities appear to end at the east side of Harbor View. My question is, since our property fronts to Greenwood, what is the damage that's going to be done to Greenwood to get an underground utility done? And how does that power line, once Greenwood ends and the bank drops down on the Bonner County Road right away, very steep, totally treed vegetation, how does a Vista tend to intend to deal with the disruption of that power line on the Greenwood and Bonner County right away? And has any feasibility study been done on the intense rock that is in that area and how that boring will take place through rock that is solid in that area? Those are my questions for Donnie Peterson, in All addition right, okay. to the flavor of Mr. Krumenacher's personality. All right. um, Thank you, Ms. Key. Um, Mr. Peterson, if, if you're willing to address any of those concerns to the best of your knowledge. Sure. Um, as far as a feasibility study, I'd had, I've had three different contractors out there and have given me their um, assessment of that area. As far as disruption from the pole east of, I'm drawing a blank on the, the road on, along Greenwood, we plan on open trenching to within about 30, 20 to 30 feet of where the elevation starts to go down, which the bank is. And then we're gonna stop and that's where the boring is gonna commence. And it's going to bore from there all the way under. There are exposed rocks in the neighbor to the south um, yard near the water's edge, and that was a concern. Um, we think that if we go on the north side of the easement, we'll be able to get our four feet and maintain, if not go deeper. Um, if we cannot maintain that, then we'd have to back out the drill machine and actually then it would turn into a situation where they do have a directional drill but that would be a last resort attempt that we don't want to do under that so we would probably try two or different spot along that bank before we thought even about drilling through the rock now that's that's kind of the plan as far as a actual survey study. It's more off of experience from my drillers um, and three other contractors, three amigos are very familiar with this area. They've drilled not only the river, um, the length of the long bridge. They've also drilled all over town and stuff. So I, I trust that their knowledge of the area and that rock, rock comes and goes. You can never predict, you know, for sure. But it looks like we do have an area that we feel that we can get a drill on there. And that's what we're gonna attempt to do. If we can't do it, then there's always that feasibility too that we just can't do it. Excuse me, um, my name is Kelly Smith. I, I, sorry, I originally said I didn't have a comment, but I have a question for the gentleman from Avista, if you don't mind. Um, very familiar with the underground bores coming from the oil and gas industry. Um, we're, what's the position of the Corps of Army Engineers with respect to the underground bore and uh, how it affects the lake? Or is there a 
is the position is there a position or have we consulted with the core you will have to ask them well so you can just go ahead and and do an underground bore without consulting with the core i believe it's part of this process Sounds a little strange to me, but I'll, I'll leave it with the uh, folks online. Thank you. Um, Ms. Kaufman, let's go back to you. Did, not to put you on the spot, but uh, you and Mr. Amer, do you have uh, knowledge of that if the Army Corps of Engineers would have to sign off on that first? I will um, answer part of it and then uh, look over to Mike to answer whatever I, uh, I answer incorrectly. Um, so with any encroachment permit um, application that's filed, it's a joint application for permit, Army Corps, IDWR, and Idaho Department of Lands, and whichever agency essentially has jurisdiction is who handles the application. Um, so the Idaho Department of Lands has this particular jurisdiction. I don't know, I see Mike looking to see if we actually sent if we sent the application to the Army Corps as well, or to um, some uh, to that organization or that agency. Yes, we did send it to Shane Slate at the Army Corps of Engineers. So he got the same attachment that all the other agencies did. I will note that Lake Ponderé is a unique lake for North Idaho in that the Army Corps of Engineers does do permitting for encroachments such as docks. We are down in the Coeur d'Alene office today and if you are applying for a dock permit on Lake Coeur d'Alene, you do not need to coordinate with Army Corps of Engineers. You only need to coordinate with Department of Lands. But if you're applying for a dock on Lake Ponderé, for example, you would need to get a dock permit from a Department of Lands as well as a dock permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers has what they call nationwide permits. I think the best way I could kind of sum that up, not being an Army Corps of Engineer representative, is that the nationwide permits are kind of like a rubber stamp permit and if it's something that they have a, a specific nationwide permit description for, it is a very pretty quick permit. Um, if it doesn't meet one of those nationwides, then they need to do a special permit, uh, which, takes, which takes a longer period of time. I do know that the Army Corps of Engineers is primarily concerned with fill and wetlands. I do not know, I cannot speak for them on their behalf of what they feel about boring underneath the, the lake bed but considering that there would be zero fill in the lake and considering that there would be a four foot buffer between the lake and the, the boring hole, uh, I, I guess I could only assume that they, they, they might not even have a permit for this. Uh, I guess that's why I assume we did not receive any comment back from uh, Mr. Shane Slate at the Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Amer. Mr. Smith, did that answer your question? Um, not really. Uh, I would feel more comfortable if there was a sign off from the core. Um, you know, as a, I, I'm a lake owner, I, I'm a landowner on the lake. Um, I'm adjacent to the common area on Fry Creek. So I understand the requirements uh, from the core and follow the permit process, everything, you know, when, when things are done. So I'm a bit concerned that this is, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to this process, but it feels like it's kind of being a little bit rubber stamped without a little bit more due diligence uh, that should, I believe, be applied to this. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. I know the core is very sensitive on Lake Ponderé. It is a wetland, low water area that uh, the proposal, uh, the, the new four unit proposal is is slated for so it's a bit of a head scratcher for me that the core wouldn't be concerned but i'm not in a position to say one way or another i'd like some more consultation but that's just my opinion okay all right thank uh, you mr. mr hearing officer i just like to point out that my statement uh was just the best of my ability working at this job i'm not, not a core representative i don't know um what their what their stance would be on this project it's just uh, we didn't receive a comment back from them so i don't really have anything else to add okay thank you mr amer all right well let's go to carolyn carolyn do you have anything that you would want to comment on this hearing not at this time thanks okay thank you carolyn what about denise marsh do you have any public comments 
Good evening, no comment at this time. Okay, thank you, Ms. Marsh. All right, is there a Gavin who would like to make a comment? Gavin, I see your microphone is still muted. Um, so if you're listening, Gavin, do you have public comment? Okay, let's skip Gavin and go to Jim Lewis. Do you have any comment for this hearing? Uh, yes, I've been listening the whole time. I'm a, a property owner on the lake and I kind of agree with Mr. Smith in that it would be interesting to see what the Army Corps of Engineers uh, has to say about this project. I don't think we've had any input that I'm aware of of this. And uh, certainly we'd want to do our due diligence prior to putting power underneath of the Fry Creek, because that would just simply lead to potentially an easier path for sewer water and the rest of it. The high water, the flooding that we have is also a uh, concern of ours. Uh, if there is a transformer there with peanut oil in it, um, or for instance, if there is no sewer and water going through there, um, how do you maintain and support a sewage holding system? So I think there's needs to be a lot more information acquired before that. That's the end of my comment. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Lewis. All right, and what about Melvin Dick? Do you have any public comment for this hearing? Uh, yes, my name is Mel Dick. Uh, I own a home across uh, from uh, Mr. Krimenacher's uh, property and I have a dock that sets on uh, the land that uh, I understood to be his or I'm not sure who owns based on the comments I heard tonight, uh, the exact ownership of that land. My dock has uh, been uh, reconstructed uh, back in 2005 or six and uh, there was an existing dock there uh, probably for at least 30 or 40 years. Uh, my only comment relative to tonight is uh, since I've lived there in 2005, I'm not aware of any official Harborview Homeowners Association uh, that was referenced before, uh, at least from an official perspective. None of my neighbors uh, who live across the street from me on uh, Harborview Drive are aware of that uh, as well. So uh, that's, my, that's my only comment. Okay, thank you. And what about, a, a, I don't know if it's Mills Brent or Mill S. Brent, um, do you have public comment? Yes, I do. Um, I, I would like to say, and uh, again, um, I'm here with Dave Gilmore, the acting president of Golden Meadows, and we've listened to the entire meeting. I, I do want you to know that, that um, when Mr. Kumanaker began this, that there was an incidence where he did trespass across our common area. And, um, and we did address that with a warning, letting him know that we would prosecute the next time that if that were to happen again. I would also like to thank Mr. Kumanaka for mentioning that we were polite at the meeting, but I don't wanna mistake our politeness for our approval of what's going on. I, I think that our disapproval will be more vocal as we move toward you know, the building of, of but uh, 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 vacation homes and such like that. But we're not in favor uh, of this development. And we did, uh, like he said, we did refuse the right, uh, we refused the right of way uh, on our common area. And, and, um, and we, you know, and so again, um, uh, uh, I do appreciate, though, that he, he referred to us as polite, yeah. <laughs> and uh, 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 but that let's not mistake that for approval of his project. So it was the uh, I'm Dave Gilmore, and just to make a correction, it was the uh, sheriff's department that issued the warning uh, for the on the first trespassing but the next one will be cite, uh, citation if it ever happened again. And he understood that and uh, we gave him a chance to bring his equipment across that night to if he wanted to exit and he 
chose to uh, do it at a later time on another person's property, which he said was a friend's. Uh, it turns out it wasn't a friend of his, but they did let him go across their property to exit his equipment. So uh, he did damage our property when he went across, left uh, some deep ruts with his heavy equipment. And uh, I think he thinks it's better to ask forgiveness than permission to do things. So beware. If, is there a Todd McLaughlin who would like to make public comment? Yes, thank you. This is Todd McLaughlin. I'm the environmental specialist for Avista. Um, just wanted to make a comment on the Corps of Engineers question. Um, so my role at Avista is to look at these projects and secure permits for whatever work we need to do. And typically when we have a service request from a private landowner that has critical areas, then my suggestion is to leave it to the landowner to secure those permits. And once they come in, then we review those conditions and make sure we follow those conditions when we install our infrastructure. So, but as, as far as an Avista project, I've taken out many permits from the Corps of Engineers. And so this project would be technically covered under the new nationwide permit 57 that just came out in 2021. And it, the Corps of Engineers really wouldn't have jurisdiction over directional drilling if we're not discharging into any waters of the U.S. And as long as we stay above the ordinary high water mark and stay upland, and sometimes I'll go out and look at these projects, actually many times, just to make sure that there's no adjacent wetlands, because those would be within jurisdiction of the Corps of Engineers. And we did try to go out to that property and made an appointment with the homeowner association to cross their common area. Unfortunately, just I really wanted to go see if there were any wetland characteristics on that piece of property because that's where we would come out and that's where the transform would be set. So I was just making sure that I could clear it on my end that there wouldn't be any wetland impact. Unfortunately, we were asked to leave, so I was never able to go and look at their property. Um, but I did look at it from the other side, and but it still wasn't very clear whether there were actual defined wetlands on um, that private property. So, but in my experience, the Corps of Engineers, just for the directional drilling would not have any jurisdiction if we're staying above the ordinary high water mark and outside any surface waters of the US. And okay. that's it. All right, thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, is there a Tucker Squires who would like to make public comment? Yes, sir, and I am here. Okay, what would you like to say? I would like to read a, a statement on behalf of myself and my wife. Um, my wife and I would like to object to the permitting of this proposed product uh, or project uh, by a Vista Corp on behalf of Mr. Krumenacher. Our property borders the south side of Greenwood Avenue at 9 Harborview Drive, Sagal. Many of our concerns, such as the incomplete application, previous relationships with neighbors, and environmental and wildlife impacts have been previously addressed by other commentators, so I will uh, avoid uh, rehashing the point. Uh, we're really concerned that the approval of this permit will cause damage, either directly or indirectly, uh, to our land, as well as the water and the, the lake access point. Additionally, it will inhibit our ability as well as our neighbor's ability and the public's ability to use that access during the time of which the permit is active and the work is being done. We purchased this home due to this access as many of our neighbors have, and we want to retain that ability to continue to use that into the future. While that may not be the necessary purview of this meeting, the future projects are what we're truly concerned about. And this is step one of those future projects. Uh, we're particularly additionally concerned about the impacts of this project on our property and our neighborhood, increased traffic and parking needs, even, even for the work that is being done. IDL has a responsibility to Lake Ponderay and to Fry Creek as noted by the IDL 
in or Idaho Department of Environmental Quality in their comments, quote, given the recent history of non-compliance with rules and laws intended to protect water quality, future work related to the proposed project could result in additional water quality impacts to Fry Creek and the near shore waters of Lake Ponderé, end quote, Idaho Department of Environmental Quality. The specific work under the scope of this permit may not seem like it will have lasting impacts. The result of the the result of the ultimate construction, use, and maintenance of the rentals one, uh, undoubtedly have far-reaching impacts. As an adjacent homeowner who would have been informed of an existing HOA as a part of the legal disclosures of purchasing my property, and I did check my legal disclosures while on this meeting, I would have been informed of a homeowners association of which my legal documents clearly state does not exist. So I would like the opportunity to examine the letter that was entered as an exhibit by Mr. Krumenacher, um, as well as an understanding of who the signer of that letter is and their contact information so we can understand who this homeowners association is that none of the houses on our street belong to that are immediately adjacent to where this work is taking place. At this time, we request that Mr. Krumenacher's application is denied and declined, pending further review from Department of Environmental Quality and the US Ar Army Corps of Engineers. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there a Vicki Reich who would like to make public comment? I don't have a comment at this time. All right, thank you. Uh, as far as I know, that's the entire list that I saw. Uh, was there anyone who I did not call who would like to make a public comment? Nope. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone's comments as well as everyone's participation. So at this point, it looks like we can conclude the hearing. And for the rules, I will issue an order on this and get it to the director of the Idaho Department of Lands, who will then issue a final order within 30 days from today's date. And so um, we, everyone can sign off now. Um, we'll be closing the Zoom meeting momentarily. And I'll just formally say that it's uh, 7.47 PM Pacific time and the hearing in the matter of the encroachment permit application number L96S2633 for a Krumenacher um, as the applicant case number PH2021 pub 20002. Uh, the hearing has concluded. And for all the, the property owners in, in that beautiful area of Idaho, I wish you the best of luck going forward with your property and your neighbor's property and, and everything else in that area. So thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.